you have to start sometime. So why not start right now? Today is your birthday. Your birthday towards enlightenment. What does one do on one's birthday? They light birthday candles. These candles are representative of their potential. A birthday shows one's potential. A death day, and then a yacht site, a celebration of death, shows and one celebrates the actual, the thing that the person did in life. But a birthday shows what his potential is. It's a light. An enlightened man. They use the same word, enlightenment. Everybody has this enlightenment potential within him that he has to bring out. So one of my suggestions now, because I think everybody, well, I didn't make this up, is a candle. One learns this from Hanukkah, where they light candles. And it just so happens that this is being done in the days in between Hanukkah and the 10th of Tevet, which in certain ways is a continuation of Hanukkah. And even if it isn't, it's, it's the time that a man, every day of the year, he's supposed to be a candle. A candle. That other people can see him and be illuminated from his candle. Come and touch the wick. Be illuminated. Here's my suggestion, by the way. I want people to carry a birthday candle, it can't be smaller than this, can it, in their pocket as a reminder that today is their birthday, that they are a candle for others. Others are going to see them and be, and be lit by their candle. Keep it in your pocket, unlit, Keep it in your pocket. You are a candle, a nair. Enlightened, the word is naor. See, it's light. That's what you are. That's your potential to be a candle for others, to illumine the darkness. So keep that in your pocket as a reminder. You are a candle. Do the candle pose in yoga. Candle pose is an Inverted pose, it's also a mother pose. It's called the mother pose in yoga. In a certain sense, it's the Shabbos lights also. But for all purposes, we're going to talk about today's your birthday. You know why? Every day is your birthday. Every day you have your chance. You're born again anew every day. Let's forget that it's every second. Every day you're born anew. You have your new opportunity every day. If you don't take it today, it's a lost opportunity, but your birthday is again tomorrow. So today is your birthday, and you start now. What are you going to do now to lead you to your potential, to lead you to your uh, fulfillment Believe me, the structures are there to keep you from yourself. 
your whole schooling and upbringing has kept you beneath the wheel from yourself. Here's your birthday. Keep it in your pocket as a reminder that you are a candle illuminating. That's all you have to do, by the way. Don't worry about being a teacher. Just be a candle. Now today, I'm going to start in answering some questions that are sent to me over the internet and on YouTube by the thousands of people that watch my videos. Remember that all this is done for my own enlightenment. And if that, if you can see the enlightenment, fine. If you don't, fine. You see? I'm developing my own candle. And I'm doing it now. The time is now. For, you, for those who know music, did you ever hear of Maloko? One of their best songs. The time is now. So I'm going to do this little section now on some of the videos called Questions Answered. And I'm going to answer some of the questions that come in to me. The, here's one of them. O oh, Holy One, not only are you the most handsome, oh, that, that's me they talk about. Let's skip all that. Let's skip the praise. I'm not Donald Trump here. Let's skip the praise, the flattery. Because you know, in Judaism, you're not supposed to flatter or unflatter, you know? It's just an unfolding. If you want to pick up on the unfolding, fine. If you don't want to pick up on it, fine. The beauty about YouTube is you can turn it off. This isn't school where you have to go back there tomorrow. You don't like it? Click. Something else coming up. Here. Should I have a... Here's the question. Should I have a living teacher or a dead master? Have neither. Have yourself. You are getting spoken to all the time. Have yourself. Find yourself. Trust yourself. Hard to believe, isn't it? After you've had a schooling where you have to raise your hand to answer the question for the teacher and then wait to see if the teacher approves. Or you have classmates that are looking at you, mm, what you're wearing today. The answer is, should I have a living teacher or a dead master? Neither. But if you're going to have one, have a living teacher. Why? So you can listen to him live. So, because he's speaking about today. The dead master was once a living teacher. But because he, when he's dead, he's gone. Remember the phrase, it's better to be a, a, a living, excuse me, it's better to be a living dog than a dead lion. You get it? It's better to be a living dog than a dead lion. Don't tell me about the greatness of the past. Tell me about the present. That's why people don't write books. Say, or don't read books. Books are, by definition, the past. You know, I, 
I have a lot of material. If I write a book, it's going to take me a year. You're listening to this live. Get it? You're listening to this live. So answer your own question. Is it better to have a living teacher or a dead master? Dead master was great. But he's dead. He can't speak. And orality is the whole key. Not reading lineality. Get it? There's a great secret in hearing. The fifth of Tevet, obviously, of the following year, was a time that they found out about the tenth of Tevet the previous year, and some people celebrate that as the, as the tenth of Tevet. Why? Because of the hearing aspect of it. When you hear about something, that's it. Then you can observe it. So it didn't matter that it happened before. They didn't hear about it till the 5th of Tevet, the next year. It didn't matter it happened on the 10th. So they celebrate the, the time that they heard it, the 5th. So it's the same with you. The dead master was the 10th. You're hearing this on the 5th. So the, the living is, because it's oral into one ear and out the other, but it's in one ear. It's oral. And don't tell me that a dead master now can be oral because of the internet. He's got to be live. See? Because it's got to be in the, the moment. Because it has to be like what day it is. Who's the president at the time? What are the things going on at the time like this, you know, the Me Too movement? So the oral teacher can address that. The dead master can't. So that's what's better. But have neither. You don't need me. <laughs> do, you, do, you need, do you need me to tell you who you are? I like that one. Do you need me to tell you who you are? No. Everybody knows their instincts, what turns them on, what their thoughts are, what their relationships are. You don't need me at all. And that's the beauty. This relationship is, is successful when you pass on from me. When you don't need me anymore. When you can do it yourself. And this is the great teaching here. There are no teachers. You listen. It's always being spoken to you. So that was a good answer. Now, second, another question that came in. I get this many times, this... Uh, question. This one comes from different people, but, you know, I'll just... Um, is it good to have a spiritual practice? Of course, they said, dear one, you know. Uh, dear elevated one. Is it good to have a spiritual practice? And the answer to that is yes. Each person, including me, has a spiritual discipline that they can fall back on 
and be dissolved into. Remember, it's a long day. It's 24 hours. Do you know? When you sit down for a meal, oh, you're hungry, you think you could eat a... Mm. After eating for an hour, you're full. Well, what are you going to do after that? Sometimes it's good to have a spiritual discipline to fall back on a little bit when you're tired. You know? When you can't be totally up. So you fall back into your practice and your discipline and your community. You know, it gives you a grounding. And if you look at all the spiritual teachers, they all have like, they're either Hindu or Buddhist, you see. Or in my case, I'm Jewish. And I'm a Kabbalist. And I fall back into that. But this is not holier than thou. I don't care what your practice is. Islam is a wonderful practice. Christianity is, is a great practice. Hinduism. Whoa. Yoga. See? Music. Tennis, because remember, I'm a tennis player. It's good to fall back into these societal, communal things. And in a certain sense, what I'm suggesting to you about being a candle is that you can become yourself within that discipline. Words Biddle Hashashim, Biddle Bushashim, or Echad Bushashim. Biddle Bushashim means to dissolve in 60, and the other is Echad in Shashim, one in 60. So that candle can shine in the surrounding light of the 60. It's, uh, I hope you get the point. The answer is it's good to have a spiritual practice. It's good to have an education, but the problem is don't get stuck in the spiritual practice and don't get stuck in the education. And if you get stuck, then you're better off getting out of the spiritual practice, and getting out of the education. And getting out of the education next time, I'm going to bring an eraser. Just like today I brought the candle that I want in your pocket. It's good to have a pencil with an eraser on it. Because what you have to do is erase all the things that the society and the schools taught you and find the MS, the truth, within that structure. You think you can erase? You know how hard it is? They get you so early. They get you to go, to get up and go to school, preparing you to be a worker. They get you to sit there in those classes, in seats, preparing you to be at a computer giving you tests, grading you relative to your friends in the classroom. You're in competition with people your own age. And in school, you're kind of like locked into your own age. So how does one become free? How does one satisfy their real urges? They don't. So they spend their life miserable. How to avoid spending your life miserable? How to be enlightened? 
how to be a, a candle and walk or like walk around like a candle. These are great secrets. If you know how to do it, tell me. I'm only on the path. It's a continuous path because I feel that I'm enlightened, but to the level that I am, there's always more light because that more light goes into the and illumines the deepest darkness. So the real secret of light is tend to the darkness. Otherwise, you're a candle in the sun. Want to be meaningful? Enter the darkness. Enter the shadow. Enter the deep, dark self. Then tell me who you are. The intuitive instincts of the gut and of the genitals and of the anal. Don't tell me, don't pretty up your eyes for me. Don't put makeup on, face. Don't fool me. You're not fooling anybody. Batting the eyes. There's a deep aspect in the, the second brain, in the gut. In the sexual. That's only being examined now in public. And understanding these, these deeper functions of the self. The real self. Not the workaday workaholic. But to illumine the inner darkness within the self. Are you with me? How many people are staying here? 23 minutes to hear this. Nobody. And that's fine with me. That's fine with me. Because to get the real thing, you've got to dig deep. That's why they bury people six feet under. They bury them under the earth. I have plenty more to say. But today... I'm going to start carrying a birthday candle because for today and this beautiful video, this was a birthday. <laughs>